Hello FX fans and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Basics and today we're going to be building the FX S Lesson Artemis gift set. First we start with the two large tube halves. Before anything meets glue, we clean the sprue tabs along the edges. A clean edge means the tube closes without gaps, so we take a moment to get that right. Inside the tube we fit four internal formers. We slide the top circular former into place, making sure the key detail faces the correct direction. Then we set the remaining three formers down the length of the tube, each one strengthening the structure and guiding the final shape. Once everything sits square, we can now join the two halves. We glue a little at a time, working around the circumference so the seam stays aligned. We clamp the tube gently and check the seams as it sets. This is the backbone of the rocket, so we let it dry fully. We cap the tube with the keyed top piece, creating the familiar shoulder of the SLS. We then prime everything in white. The white primer gives the orange colour its richness and consistency, so we take our time ensuring full coverage. Now we can paint the darker orange that defines the real rocket's cryogenic tank. Once the shade is even, we seal it with a satin lacquer to protect the paint during later handling. We can assemble the engine base, this is two halves together, followed by the two lower sections and the four internal nozzle caps. Each piece slots into place with intention. We prime the full unit white, then give it a satin varnish to lock the surface. We have the decals for the panel markings, settling them into the moulded detail. Then we mask and paint the orange connection points that will join the engine section to the main tank. We add very subtle weathering, a panel wash flows into the recesses and settles into corners, giving the engine genuine depth. We remove the excess with a cotton bud and white spirit leaving the lines sharper and the texture more complex. We then prime the nozzles black. The black becomes metallic and textured, giving the nozzles the right mix of sheen and restraint. We fit all four nozzles into the engine base. To keep them aligned, we rest the base flat on the table and adjust the nozzles until they sit at identical angles, then secure them from the inside. This creates a unified, authentic engine cluster. Now we can join the engine section to the bottom of the main core tube. Once secured, we refine the surface. We use weathering powders to soften the orange insulation, adding warmth, variation and the subtle use quality of a working spacecraft. We take the exposed pipework and give it a pale orange tone. Each pipe has a position and a purpose and we follow the instruction guide to place them cleanly along the tank. The white end caps remain unpainted, the raw plastic colour is already correct. Next we can bring in the railings, we paint them on the sprue first so they're easier to handle. Once dry we remove them and attach them up the length of the core stage. Each one locks into a precise mounting point, adding real structural flavour to the build. Finally we can run a panel line accent into the recesses, introducing subtle contrast across the surface. Each booster begins with an internal bulkhead. We match the alignment marks carefully, then close the halves around it. This gives us two smooth, cylindrical booster bodies. We attach the keyed nose cones in the lower engine sections. The internal silver dome and white nozzle slots cleanly into the base. We prime, smooth the seams and paint the boosters bright white. A coat of satin varnish protects them for decal work. We have the small brackets, vents and attachment points, giving the boosters their distinctive stepped geometry. 
Each deco is placed with intention. Booster 1 and Booster 2 differ slightly so we pay attention to their orientation. The stripes and markings transform the boosters into the recognisable SLS hardware. We fit the final nozzles at the base, completing the assembly. We assemble the structural rings from parts A, B and C, matching each to its numbered notch. Then we construct the smaller internal ring using A, B, C and D, and glue the curved dome into its centre. We join the larger outer ring to the upper assembly, lock in the connectors and add the small keyed exterior parts that shape the stage. We build the nose cone and its four small nozzles, and once complete we attach the nose cone assembly to the payload stack. Now the upper stage begins to resemble its real counterpart. We fit the silver disc and its frame onto the payload base, we then paint the black frame once assembled, then drop the silver plate into position for a clean, crisp contrast. Now that everything is built, we join the sections. We mount the two boosters onto the sides of the core stage, attaching each one to its brackets. We place the payload section on top, completing the SLS silhouette. That's the full build of the Airfix SLS Artemis gift set, from the core tank to the boosters and payload module. If you've followed along you should now have a detailed, realistic Artemis rocket ready for display. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe, we'll see you next time.